Hi, I'm Lauren Bregitzer, an Ableton certified trainer. I'm here to continue this series on tutorials in Ableton Live 11. So this next video, I'm going to show you how to program a drum beat in Ableton Live. So maybe you're able to uh, drag clips around. Let's talk about how to actually program your own drum beat. So first thing I'm going to do is pick out a drum kit. I'm going to do this by going into packs. So this, I can go to drums, but I can see just a whole intimidating array of drums that I have. So I can click on packs and go in and sort of look at ones that might fit within a different a specific category. So I'm going to open up this chop and swing because I know that comes with all versions of Ableton Live. And I'm going to go in here and just open up drums. So this will play the drum kits that I'm looking for. Um, it'll play a, just a, a test pattern so I can hear how the drums sound. So I'm just going to check out a couple of these and kind of decide what I want. All right, so I like this one. So what I'm going to do is just drag that onto a MIDI track. Now, it doesn't drag any MIDI notes on there, so it's just that drum rack here. So I can see it down here in the detail view. I can just you know, click on this play button on each instrument and, and hear all they all sound. And so now, in order to program this drum kit, I need to create a... Um, MIDI clip. So all I need to do is go into this track that has the clip on it and just double click on an empty clip slot. So I double click on here and I just create a one bar clip and you can see the bottom detail view has changed from that drum rack to this MIDI clip here. So there's two different things that can show up in the clip view. The whatever's in the clip, whether it's MIDI data or audio data as in a loop of some kind and the device info. So my one of my most used shortcuts is the shift tab. So I hit shift tab. It's going to toggle that display in the detail view from the device to whatever's in the clip. And so I'm going to go with just the clip view here, clip detail view, and I can see this one bar drum loop. So it's defaulting to give me a one bar drum loop. If I want something longer, I can go over here to length and adjust that to two bars four bars or whatever. I'm just going to go for one bar right now. I can always extend it if I want to later on. All right. So in order to draw these in, um, I can use the pencil tool. So I can go to the upper right-hand corner of the screen and click on the pencil. And that will allow me to draw these notes in. Let's undo that. Or I can toggle that pencil tool with another handy shortcut, which is the B key. So the B key toggles that pencil tool on and off. So if I want to listen to this drum beat while I'm programming it in, um, I can just hit the play button and I'll be able to hear it. Now, the other thing that I like to turn on when I'm, you know, programming a drum beat is the preview of the drum sound. So I can click on the MIDI preview, MIDI editor preview button. So if I put that, click on that little headphone icon, when I click on each of those notes, it'll play what it sounds like. So I can turn that on or off. I'm going to keep it on for the time being. Um, and I'm just going to just do a um, work on the kick drum here for a second. So I hit the B key to switch to the pencil tool. Uh, and so you can hear it plays that note when I, when I draw that in there. You wouldn't hear that if I had that preview turned off. Um, so I'm going to keep the preview turned off for the time being and uh, just kind of make adjustments this way. I'm going to launch and play that, launch that clip and hear it in real time. I'm going to slow my tempo down a little bit. Maybe 110. Let's find a snare in there. And... All right, so that's a good start there. Um, so maybe I want you know the hi the hi hat to play. If I click on the preview button, I can hear that hi hat. I have a couple different hi hat options here. I 
sort of like that vintage sound. So I'm going to hit the B key to toggle that on. And I can just drag that across there. Now, if I'm like, that's okay, but maybe I want to try the other hi-hat sound, I can hit the B key to toggle it back to this selector. I can just drag my cursor across there and use my up arrow keys to move that so I can move that to the uh, other hi-hat here. So, you know, that's okay, but it might be a little bit busy for what I'm going for. So I can just select that all and... If I want, might want to keep it for later on, I can hit the zero key and the zero key will actually turn it off. So it grays out. I won't hear it, but it's still there. So I can always easily turn it on and off again. And I can do that just by um, selecting it all and hit zero to turn that note all on and off. Or I can actually <coughs> um, click that note and it'll select all those. I can hit zero as well. So maybe I want to just do the same thing with the, do go for the ride symbol. And I drag across and hit play. And that's way too much. I, there, It's playing in 16th notes, which is what it's defaulting to be my grid here. Maybe I want eighth notes instead of 16th notes. So I'm just going to command Z and undo that. And what I need to do to get those to be eighth, eighth notes is rather than sit here and kind of draw those in individually at every other 16th note, I can change the grid to eighth note. So I can right click in here and you can see this fixed grid is set to 16th notes. I can move it to eighth notes and that will change my subdivisions here. So now I can just drag across. So that sounds pretty good. Uh, let's check out a couple of these other sounds. Maybe I want to add something in there. I'll probably want to add those here in a second. Um, ooh, I like that. I'm just going to drop one of those at the top. Let's see where one of these would go. I'll hit that right on right there. Nice. Now, say I want to adjust uh, the the loudness of it because it's playing them all at the exact same loudness. You know, I can I can drag up and expand this out over here, and maybe I want to just. Uh, maybe add some dynamics to that ride symbol. So I can um, click on that. It's going to select all those. And I can actually go in and with the B key, I can actually bring them all down if I want them to come down. Or I can click on them all individually and just sort of... Um, yeah. And just sort of grab each one individually. Maybe I want to do these three. So I'm going to select all three of these, bring them down so the one is louder than the two, three, four. The same thing here. So I'm going to adjust the loudness there, make it a little more, uh, a little more dynamic. Bring them down a little more. Bring these down a little more. So I can just really exaggerate those dynamics. Maybe bring this one up. Nice. Right, so that's my one drum beat that I have programmed in there. May I want to make do a version that has that ride uh, the hi hat instead of the ride symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this. I'll call it um, beat one. So, so I'm just going to right click in there and enter the new name. So I can drag it down here to make another copy of it. And I can even change the color. So if I right click in there, I can pick a similar color, but not the same. So it visually looks a little bit different to me. And let's rename this one. 
Um, beat two. So from here, I can expand this out. And again, like I did before, hit zero to turn off all those rides and then uh, zero to turn on all those hi-hats. So now when I launch the second clip, So maybe now I want to just do some adjustments of the uh, loudness of that hi-hat. Bring these down. Make them all slightly different. Now it's here. So now in Ableton Live, I can go here and launch one beat. And then launch the second beat. Back to the first one. So there you have it. That's how you can just draw in and manually program your own drum beat into Ableton Live. In the next video, I'm going to show how you can do that using a MIDI controller or your computer's alphanumeric keyboard. Thanks for watching.